All right, today we're going to work on some circular motion on a planetary scale, or at least near our planet. Uh, so we're going to talk about the International Space Station. So fun facts about the International Space Station. Uh, it orbits the Earth at an altitude of 370 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. It also orbits the Earth once every 90 minutes. So it's actually moving really fast. Question is, what gravitational field strength does the International Space Station experience space. Now we know that near the surface of the Earth, gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And we also know that as we get farther away from the Earth, that value decreases. The question is, what is it like at the International Space Station? So to solve this problem, we're going to first start like we always do, and that's to make a nice sketch and list our givens. And then we're going to see what can we do with this information and where can we go from here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a beautiful sketch of the Earth. So here's the Earth. All right, so Earth. And I'm, I'm not even going to draw the entire Earth. I'm just going to go there. Okay, so we'll assume the Earth's really big. And then we've got the International Space Station. Oh, look, it's also a ball. Look at my art skills. And I like to put the curve of it so we know it's going in a circle. <clears throat> and, well, let's see, what other stuff do we know? So we said that it has an altitude of 370 kilometers. Now, this is kilometers, so we have to remember that this is 370 times 10 to the third meters, or you could write 3,000, uh, 37, add three zeros to it to make it meters. So whichever way that works for you, you do. Uh, I am going to be working with some scientific notation today because that's often a problem that some students run into, so that way I can try and nip that in the bud. So I'm going to put 370 times 10 to the third meters. Okay, so that's how far away it is. And then that would be the radius. So I'll just kind of also make some lists here. So radius is 370 times 10 to the third meters. We also know this 90 minutes, okay? So that's how long it takes to make one orbit. So that is our period of rotation. So again, period is the time it takes to make one full rotation. Now this is in minutes, and we don't want to be minutes. We want to convert that into seconds. So all we have to do is multiply that by 60. And so we get 5,400 seconds. All right, so we got radius and we have period. Now, I'm going to ask you an interesting question. Is this really the radius? Because we define the radius as the distance from the center of the circle to the object itself on the edge of the circle. Well, this is not the center of the circle. The center of the circle is down here in the center of the Earth. So we also need to know the radius of the Earth. Now, it didn't give us this in the problem, but <clears throat> you can basically do a quick Google of this, okay? So the radius of the Earth is actually 6.371 times 10 to the sixth. Yes, it's huge meters. All right, so that's the radius of the Earth. So if we really want to find the actual radius of rotation, we're going to have to add these two values together. So it's actually this value, which is its altitude, plus the radius of the Earth itself. 6.371 times 10 to the sixth meters. All right, so we're going to add those two together. And that's the number that we'll be using. So let's see, it's 370 times 10. And when I do this times 10 in my calculator, I'm always hitting the double E button on my TI-85. Yes, I know I'm old, but it's a great calculator. Uh, so you just hit the double E button on the TI calculator and just type in the exponent, and it will treat it like it's a single unit. And so I'm just going to add these two together, 6.371 times 10 to the sixth. And so we get an actual radius of 6.741 times 10 to the sixth meters. All right, now if you don't like to use exponents, that's fine. You can just have a ton of zeros, but just you know, make sure you can count them all. So again, whatever works for you, you do you. So this is the information that we have. We broke it down into our the, uh, the base units we want. So we're in seconds instead of meters. We're in meters instead of kilometers, all that fun stuff. So now we have to ask ourselves, 
what does the gravitational field strength look like? Now, if we're looking for gravitational field strength, we're probably talking about force of gravity, which means we're talking about forces. So I'm going to draw a force diagram for my International Space Station. So here's my International Space Station, and I'm going to keep it in kind of the same orientation, and it just has the force of gravity acting on it towards that center of the circle. Now, I always draw the center of the circle, and then I always put a little dotted line to show that curve. So there's my force of gravity. Now, since we're working with circular motion, we are going to be working in the centripetal plane. Centripetal plane. That's the plane that cuts through the center of the circle because we're not in the x-plane, we're not in the y-plane, we're going to keep rotating, it's going to be constantly changing, but this force of gravity will always point towards the center of that circle. So it's in the centripetal plane. So I'm going to do my circular motion stuff, because i got force diagram, i got a whole ton of givens, and I'm like, okay, where do I start? Well, if I drew a force diagram, I probably want to do a net force equation. So bust that out, sigma f of c equals m, a C. Now again, the C's represent centripetal, center seeking. So this is the sum of all the forces in the centripetal plane. So if we add all these forces together, this one's pretty easy, there's only force of gravity, uh, equals the mass of the system times the centripetal acceleration. All right. So let's see, centripetal force, well, the only force here is the force of gravity. And I'm just going to make it uh, positive because, you know, why not? Why, why work with negatives? You don't have to. So we get Fg equals m. And now I got to replace centripetal acceleration with something. Now I'm going to go off to the side here, a little thought. I have two equations in my back pocket from our discussions. So ac is either equal to v squared over r or ac is equal to 4 pi squared r over t squared. So either of those two are options to replace the centripetal acceleration. So you're pretty much always going to replace the centripetal acceleration unless it specifically says what is the acceleration of the object. So here I go, well, okay, uh, radius, check. Okay, but that's in both of them, so that's kind of help, uh, not so helpful. Uh, this one's asking about our speed, and I know nothing of speed. This one cares about the period, and I do know the period. So I'm going to replace... Uh, this one here with my math. So I'm going to have m times the quantity 4 pi squared r over t squared. All right, so here's my equation. Now you might be like, Mr. Szymanski, this is totally unsolvable because I do not have the mass and I don't know anything about gravity. It's like, okay, calm down, calm down. Remember, we can replace the force of gravity with mg. So we get mg equals m times. 4 pi squared r over t squared. Now, maybe you'll notice what happens here with mass. I did not give you the mass of the International Space Station. Fun fact, it's 420,000 kilograms. But you didn't need to know that because mass cancels out. And so now, look, here's our g. That's our gravitational field strength. That's what we're looking for, which I should have been a better teacher and put that here in my givens because we always want to list the things we know as well as the things we don't know. Sorry, I'm human. So now it's a matter of just subbing everything in. So I now have g equals 4 times pi squared times my radius. Now I have to use the big radius here because we want the combined radius. 6.741 times 10 to the 6th over the period squared. So 5,400 quantity squared, and now it's simply a matter of doing the math. So I'll crunch those into my calculator. You're going to want to use parentheses when you do these. Uh, you know, I know it's a few extra button clicks, but it's really worth it. So if you crunch all this stuff, you see that your G value is 9.1. We'll go 3. Newtons per kilogram. All right. So, as you can see, and as we thought, as you get farther away from the surface of the Earth, the gravitational field strength goes down. So, if you are on the International Space Station, then you are only experiencing a gravitational field strength of 
9.13 newtons per kilogram instead of someone on Earth who's experiencing a gravitational field strength of 9.8. Uh, so, yeah. So, a lot of times problems can seem really complicated like this, but if you take the time, you break them down, you list your givens, and you say, you know what, I got a force, I got forces, let's draw a force diagram. And if I got a force diagram, I can make a net force equation and then just start seeing where things take me. And you can always do your substitution. All right. So I hope that was helpful and I hope that helps with the worksheets and quizzes to come. So until then, enjoy science.